everybody, and welcome to another 3D Printing Doctor Who Project figure reveal video. Today I'll be showing off my first non-action figure, with zero points of articulation and no moving parts whatsoever, except for the button on the back, which is purely optional. I am speaking, of course, about figure number 17, the Ogre, those giant hemoglobin-sucking standing stones last seen in the classic 1978 Fourth Doctor adventure, The Stones of Blood. Yes, only Doctor Who fans could get excited about adding a giant rock to their collection. Uh, but this is no ordinary lump of inanimate rock, because this rock also... glows. In fact, it pulses ominously, just like the ogre seen throughout the majority of the serial. This particular figure is based on what I guess you would call the hero ogre from the episode, uh, seen in the majority of sequences. There is a second one with a pointier top whose main weakness was low-hanging ceilings, uh, but this model fits on shelves a little bit easier and is a little more recognizable because of its large vertical seam and small shelf area in case you care to make any blood sacrifices to your new toy. My original 2018 version of this figure was designed to work with an LED light brick and operated by a small dial on the back. While this got the job done, it didn't look quite as professional, and the dial tended to just fall off the bottom whenever you lifted up the figure. So in 2021, I went back and created a new version that worked with regular LED fairy lights, which are much easier to obtain and only cost a couple dollars each. There are a couple of different styles of LED fairy lights in the market, so I actually ended up making five different designs depending on what you're printing out of and whether you want it to light up or not. First of all, there's the completely solid version, if you just want a solid lump of rock. This works best if you're doing regular filament printing and plan on letting your slicer software take care of providing the infill. There's also a hollow version without LED supports, if you want a hollow lump of rock that's better suited to resin printing. Then there's my original dial version that works with a 2x3 LEGO compatible LED light brick, if you prefer using one of those for some reason. Then there's a hollow version for both filament and resin printing that works with the type of CR2032 LED string lights that have a switch on the bottom edge of the battery case. Uh, the battery pack is positioned inside the body so that you can just flip it over and turn the switch on and off whenever you want it to light up. And finally, a version that works with the type of CR2032 LED string lights that have a button on the front of the battery case, used to switch between the different flashing light patterns. This is my preferred version, since the battery pack is completely concealed up inside the body, and the button on the battery pack is triggered via a small concealed button on the outside of the model. See it right there. And this means that you can turn it on and off during play, and also choose a style of flashing lights that looks the most screen accurate to you. The two versions that use LED string lights also come with a screw-in false bottom so that you can take it on and off if you ever have to replace the batteries. Now as far as how you should print this thing, if you're using a resin printer you don't need to use anything fancy, just regular old white ABS-like resin is fine. Uh, the material's thin enough and the LEDs are bright enough that they'll show through just fine even if the surface is opaque. If you do print out of a clear resin, you may need to scuff up the surface a little bit or diffuse the LED lights with some sort of hot glue or plastic wrap so that they don't glow too intensely and start showing through at individual points of light uh, from inside the body. For filament printing, I recommend using a natural or clear PLA uh, or transparent PETG if you can find it. The layer lines will make the surface kind of naturally cloudy, so a more transparent material to start with is going to end up uh, being better and a little bit more transparent when you finish. In terms of painting and assembly, this is all pretty darn easy. For paint, you can go with any sort of tan or sandstone colored enamel, but if you want to make it look really cool, pick up a bottle of Rust-Oleum Desert Bisque uh, textured spray paint, which will make the surface look more like actual sandstone. I recommend painting first and then inserting the LED lights because it may take some adjustment to get them positioned in a way where the entire figure glows rather than just specific parts. If the lights aren't diffuse enough, you can try wrapping the string in plastic wrap or putting a little blob of hot glue on the end of the LED light. Uh, whatever you do, you will want to use the whole LED string light. Don't cut it short because the voltage is specifically set for 20 or 30 or however many lights there are supposed to be on the strand. Adding or subtracting one or two lights won't matter that much, but trim off much more than that, and you'll notice the wires starting to get noticeably hot to the touch. Probably won't burn your house down, but it will cause your LEDs to burn out faster and potentially melt any hot glue or plastic wrap that you used in your design process. So there you have it, your very own stone of blood. 
Uh, just print eight more of these, and you can have your own stone circle to go with your Kaliak figure, which should, coincidentally enough, be coming soon to the 3dprintingdoctorwho.com website. That's it for now. If you want to see what else I'm working on, please visit us on Facebook or check out 3dprintingdoctorwho.com. Doctor! Yes? It's getting rather exciting, isn't it? What? Yes, yes, of course. Let's hope it doesn't get too exciting, huh?